This is the second lecture for section 2.1 on controversial elections. In this lecture, I'll talk about the concepts of plurality and majority. So what is a plurality? There are many different voting systems as we're going to learn, and the most common system used in United States elections is the plurality system. And this is also sometimes called first past the post, but I'm gonna use the word plurality to describe it. And the candidate who, who gets more votes than any other candidate is said to receive a plurality. So plurality just means more votes than anybody else. A candidate receives a majority if they earn more than half of the total number of votes. And those aren't quite the same thing. You can win a plurality. You can get more votes than everybody else without winning a majority. And we already saw in the previous lecture several examples from historical elections where that occurred where the winner of the election got more votes than everybody else, but didn't win more than half the votes. So it's important to understand the difference between this word plurality and the word majority. So here's an example. So let's say we have an election for what kind of snack we wanna have with our lunch. And we've got three choices, Doritos, cookies, and fruit salad. And everybody votes for their favorite choice. And so let's say these are the results. So we had 13 people who voted for Doritos, 16 people who voted for cookies, and eight people who voted for fruit salad. In this kind of chart, we're gonna be seeing a lot of charts like this throughout this chapter. So we're gonna have a, a column that gives the number of voters, that's gonna be sort of to the left here, and then what those voters voted for, or what those voters' preference is, is gonna be listed to the right here. So this means that 13 people voted for Doritos, 16 people voted for cookies, and eight people voted for fruit salad. So according to the plurality method, because 16 is the biggest number here, that means the most people voted for cookies, and so cookies wins because it has a plurality. It's more votes than any other candidate. But is that a majority? Well, the way to figure that out is to add up the total number of voters. So if I add 13 plus 16 plus eight here, that gives me 37. Now remember, majority means more than half. So I take 37 and divide it by two, and that's gonna give me 18.5. So that means to get a majority, you would have had to get more than 18.5, or in other words, 19 or more votes to get a majority. And that didn't happen here. So cookies is the winner by plurality, but didn't get a majority. So what's wrong with the plurality? Well, what we're seeing here is that even though 16 people, more than any other candidate, 16 people wanted cookies, we have 21 people, and I'm getting that by taking the 13 plus the eight. Those are the other voters. So there's 21 people that wanted something else, that got stuck with something that they didn't want. And 21 is a majority. So you have a majority of voters who want something other than the thing that won. And so that's why this sort of feels unfair in some sense. So and another way to think about this is, let's say these eight people who voted for the fruit salad, what if they had thought strategically and thought to themselves, you know what? We like fruit salad, but we know that's not a super popular choice. So maybe what we'll do is we like Doritos sort of second best. So maybe we should strategically vote for Doritos instead of voting for fruit salad, because then at least we don't get stuck with something that we really don't want. That's the kind of thinking that we end up doing when we're thinking about how to uh, get what we want. Even if it's not our top choice, maybe we can get our second choice. So we're going to be looking ahead. We're going to be looking at some other things that can go wrong in the course of an election. We're going to look at other alternate methods for determining the winner of an election that allow voters to express more of their preferences, that help deal with this problem of people feeling like they're getting stuck with a winner that they didn't want. And repeatedly going to be coming back to this question of what makes an election method unfair.